Welcome back to another episode of Productivity Unlocked. I am your host, Shahid Sharif. Last week, we dug deep into the strategic value of architecture review boards and why they are absolutely critical for organizational success. The response was incredible. So many of you reached out asking the same question. Okay, Shahid, I have passed my ARB. Now what? That is exactly what we are tackling today. Because here is the thing. Getting ARB approval is just the beginning. It is like getting permission to build a house, but now you need actual blueprints that a construction crew can follow. Today we are talking about solution design documents, the critical bridge between your high-level architecture and the real-world implementation. If you are an IT professional, architect, or project manager who has ever wondered why projects fail even after ARB approval, stick with me for the next 10 minutes. This could save your next project. The problem. Let me start with a story that might sound familiar. A few months ago, a friend of mine was consulting with a major financial services company. They had this brilliant cloud migration project, passed ARB with flying colors, executive buy-in, budget approved. Six months later, they were three months behind the schedule, 40% over budget, and the security team was having nightmares about compliance gaps. What went wrong? They jumped straight from the ARP presentation to development. No design solution document. The development team was essentially trying to build a skyscraper from a napkin sketch. This happens more often than you would think. We get so excited about ARP approval that we forget what you present to ARP is a high-level design or HLD. It is strategic, conceptual, focused on what and why. But developers and implementers need a low-level design, the LLD that answers the how in excruciating detail. Think about it this way. Your ARB presentation is like a city planning proposal. It shows where the roads go, where the buildings are, how traffic flows. But to actually build that city, you need architectural drawings, engineering specifications, utility plans, construction schedules. That is your solution design document. The gap between HLD and LLD is where projects die. It is where Scope creep lives, where security vulnerabilities hide, where integration nightmares are born. So what makes an effective solution design document? I have analyzed hundreds of these over the years, and the successful ones share some key characteristics. First, they are comprehensive, but not overwhelming. You need enough detail that a developer or the implementer who was not in your art presentation can understand what to build, but not so much detail that the document becomes a maintenance nightmare. Second, they maintain absolute traceability back to your ARP commitments. Every security control you promised, every integration point you identified, every performance target you committed to, it all needs to show up in the implementation detail. Let me walk you through the essential components. Requirements deep dive. Take those high-level requirements from your ARB and break them down into specific testable criteria. If you told the ARB, the system will be highly available. Your solution design needs to specify the number of nines the system will be available. Technical architecture details. This is where you get granular. Component diagrams, API specifications, data flow details, error handling approaches. Every integration point needs documentation because that is where most implementations fail. Security implementation specifications. Your ARB presentation probably showed security controls at a conceptual level. Now you need to specify exactly how authentication works how data gets encrypted, how logging captures security events. The security team needs to be able to validate that what gets built matches what was approved. Data design. Do not underestimate this. Document your data models, storage strategies, backup procedures, retention policies. If you are handling sensitive data, specify classification schemes and handling procedures. Deployment and operations planning. How does this thing actually get deployed? What environments does it need? What monitoring do operations teams need to set up? What happens when something goes wrong at 3 a.m.? Testing strategy. For each requirement, specify how it gets tested. Unit tests, integration tests, security tests, performance tests. Define success criteria that everyone can agree upon. Now let's dive into the common pitfalls. Now let me share the most common mistakes I see because avoiding these will put you ahead of 80% of the projects. Mistake number one. Over engineering. I have seen solution design documents that are 200 pages long and try to specify every single detail. That's not helpful. It's paralyzing. Focus on decisions that significantly impact security, integration, performance, or maintainability. 
give developers and implementers flexibility where it makes sense. Mistake number two, misalignment with ARB approval. I see this constantly. Teams use the solution design phase to quietly change things they committed to during the ARB. Maybe they realize their original approach was too ambitious, so they scale it back without telling anyone. Do not do this. If detailed analysis reveals problems with approved approach, go back through proper change control. Maintain the traceability. Mistake number three, writing in isolation. Your solution design document cannot be created in a vacuum. You need input from developers and implementers who will build it, operations teams who will run it, security specialists who will audit it, business users who will use it. Their input during design prevents costly surprises during implementation. Mistake number four, treating it as a one-time deliverable. Your solution design document is a living artifact throughout implementation. As you discover new requirements, solve integration challenges, or adjust performance approaches, the document needs to be updated. Otherwise, it becomes obsolete documentation that no one trusts. So how do you get this right? Here are my top strategies for solution design document success. Do not write the entire document and then ask for feedback. Create it in sections. Get stakeholder input. Iterate quickly. This prevents major rework later. Second, focus on decision rationales. Do not just document what you are building. Document why you made specific technical choices. When developers and implementers hit implementation challenges, understanding the reasoning behind decisions helps them make better adjustments. Third, create implementation tracking mechanisms. Use your solution design document as a baseline for measuring progress. Regular reviews should assess adherence to specifications and identify emerging issues early. Fourth, plan for post-implementation review. After deployment, compare what you actually built with what you designed. Document lessons learned. This retrospective analysis improves your process for future projects. Finally, evolve your template. Every project teaches you something about what works and what does not in solution design documentation. Capture those details and lessons and refine your approach. Look, here's the bottom line. Our approval gets you permission to build. Solution design documents tell you how to build successfully. The gap between these two is where most IT projects fail. I have seen too many talented teams struggle because they did not invest in comprehensive solution design. They had the technical skills, they had executive support, they had budget, but they did not have the bridge between architectural vision and the implementation reality. A well-crafted solution design document is not just documentation, it is risk mitigation, it is team alignment, it is your roadmap from approval to achievement. If you are working on a project that has passed ARB, but you are feeling uncertain about implementation details, that is your signal. You need a comprehensive solution design document. Here is my challenge for you. Look at your current project. Can a developer or implementer who was not involved in your ARB presentation understand exactly what to build from your existing documentation? If the answer is no, you have got to, to do more work. I have put together a template with specific guidance on creating effective solution design documents. You will find the link in the show notes. Thanks for listening to Productivity Unlocked. I am your host, Shai Sharif. Please subscribe, like, and share for greater reach. Until next time, keep building solutions that matter.